Hey, this is Warren. Um, I'm doing a video today to tell you that you can achieve anything, anything you want to achieve. And I promise you, no matter how extreme it seems, you can achieve it. The reason why people don't achieve is because they give up as soon as they fail. But you gotta realize the most successful people in the world, they fail more time than you and I. But the difference is, is that they don't give up. They try. They try. And they try. Like, you've got to have a why to whatever your dream is, okay? If it's to become fit, if it's to be successful in whatever your industry is, okay? You've got to have a why. And you've got to have a hunger. You've got to get up earlier than most people, okay? If you get up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, you get a jump start on everyone in your field. Do you understand? Like, you can't just expect to be successful. You've got to work hard. It's hard work. It is hard work. But trust me, boy, when, when you keep doing it and doing it and it comes off, the feeling is immense. I want to change to be successful. I want to give my family what I never had. I'll tell you a bit about my success. I grew up with um, me and three siblings, one brother and two sisters, and my mum. Like, I'm not, I don't want you to feel sorry for me. I'm just telling you my story. I'm telling you my hunger for why I keep grinding today and tomorrow. And every minute, hour of the day, I'm thinking about my grind. I grew up with just my mum. My mum was 17 years old when she had me. She was very young when she had me. So obviously, there's no manual instructions how to be a mum. She was 17 years old, just finished school. You're still, a, you're still a kid. You're still a kid at the end of the day. And I don't blame my mum for what I went through. I love my mum a lot. She struggled. Because the thing is, she didn't feel the love from her mum and dad, from my grand and nan. She didn't feel that love. So she couldn't pass it down to us. So I understand that. But she does love us, but she finds it hard to show us. And... I just, I remember when I was younger, I remember when I was younger, my mum would bring back both men and they would beat my mum up in front of me. And I used to see this and I used to think, I didn't know any different. I used to cry my eyes out. I used to be in bed scared. I used to cry my eyes out all the time. But looking back on it, I think, wow, how did I go through that? I'm not sure, I think God was looking after me. So um, when I was younger, my mum was like, she was like a friend to me, rather than a mum. I love her to bits, but she was like a friend to me. But she didn't know how to be a mum. And my mum, depression got my mum really badly. My mum doesn't value herself. She didn't value herself. So she would abuse herself. She started taking drugs, soft drugs, and then it just snowboarded like it does with many people. It snowboard. My mum would get boyfriends. I would see different people in my life. People would say, yeah, call me dad. And then a couple of months later, they're gone. And I just see my life is my... I don't know, like, I've always thought I don't want to be just an anybody. I don't want to be a number. I want to be someone that has a leisure legacy. I want to help other people. I want to... That feeling when you help someone else is like no other. It's better than the feeling when you get paid it, paid money. Like when I was when I, I was eleven years old, my mum went on to heroin. So um things got bad. Like she would I would be in the house on my own for days. I would have to look after my brother. I'd have to hide my brothers and sisters when the social workers came over. Be quiet in the house. And it was hard, but my mum was to me like, if they ever took up, let me run away. And I believe that I didn't want to go in foster care. But my mum one day, she said, you know what? 
She couldn't do it anymore. She got fat and drunk and she couldn't look after us. And at that time I didn't understand why. Why she didn't want us. But she put us. So we went into care. My sisters went into a home. And me and my brother went into a home. And it was tough. It was hard. But um, I, I just... When you're a kid, you just when you're a kid, you just muscle for it. I just muscle for it. I just thought, you know what? It's the tempting thing. We'll be back together soon. That's what I thought in my head. I was so positive about it. I'm not sure why I was positive about it. But yeah. So when I was in, in when I was in um in foster care, I was 13 years old. When I was 13, that's when I found God. I've always believed in God. But I found God truly, and I prayed every single night. That my mum would get clean of drugs and my sisters wouldn't get adopted. My sisters wouldn't get adopted. They were so young, someone wanted to adopt them. So they social came to our house and they told us that we're not going to see um, our sisters again until we're 18. And it was hard for me. It was hard for my brother, all of us. I prayed every single night. And the, the most, the, the miracle, okay, this, this is the miracle. My mum is now 15 years clean of drugs. You know how hard it is to get off heroin. You believe me, trust me, it's so hard. Five percent get off heroin. My mum did it. I'm so proud of what my mum done. I looked at her and you know what? My mum done it. And she wrote me letters all the time. I wrote letters back, and I'm just so proud. I was like, I'm getting my family back. I'm getting my family back. And it felt so. So good to me. My heart was bleeding when I was with my mum and my sisters. But like now, I can see. Like, when I went back to my mum's house, this, this, this is the miracle in the story. I prayed that my sisters didn't get adopted. The day the woman was going to adopt my sisters, she fell ill. Really ill, and she couldn't sign the papers. My mum went to court, got us. The boys that got me and my brother back first, we didn't expect them to get my sisters back. And she got all of us back as a family. I we to hear back as a family. And that feeling, oh my god, it was like 20,000 Christmases put in one. And, <laughs> it's funny. And I got into like, obviously I kept praying, and I thought, but like, I put God to the back of my mind, and then the back of my mum, I thought, okay, I've got what I wanted. As a kid, I thought I got what I wanted, okay, but when I'm well, maybe when I'm 40, 40 something, <laughs> I get, I'll be a good, good God fearing person again. I'll do really good things. I won't drink, I won't gamble, I won't do any of these things. But obviously, I was young, I wanted to party, I think, oh, I'm missing out. All my friends are going drinking, they're going clubbing, they're, having, they're getting with girls. I thought I was messing, I thought I was missing out. So I was doing these things. And something bad happened to me. Two years ago, I got jumped by like 10 guys and I got beat up in a pretty bad way. And then, since then, I thought, you know what? I could have died that night. So I can't wait. I can't think that I'm going to make it to 40. So from now on, every day I think about death. I think about, I could, this could be the day that I go. So I was like, I've got to make a change. Okay, you've got to make a change. You've got to make a change. So I stopped drinking. I stopped gambling. And I stopped being selfish. I stopped being nice. I was nice. I was being nice. I've always had the same mentality. Okay. I was, I'm, from, I play, I'm from Oxford. But Oxford, people think it's posh. It's got like the university. I had a deprived car. I had a, a really bad drug, have, drug problem in Oxford. Okay. All my old friends in school, they've either got kids, in prison, not here no more, or just on benefits. And it's set often the easy 9 to 5. With me, I've always said in my head, okay, I've been always been passionate about football my whole life. Football was everything for me as well. I kept me on a straight path. But God, I knew whatever I'd done, God would look down on me and I would get judged on whatever I'd done. And it's just like, I wanted to be a 
I don't know, something inside me, God was looking after me, he put me in a bubble, I didn't, I didn't get involved with any of that stuff, I had what I wanted, I wanted the same dream from when I was 13, to now, and, and it's just, it's just amazing how, like, it happened when I was, like, the last nine weeks I've been working out every, every day, okay, but, before the nine weeks I read a book called Confidence by Paul McKenna he teaches you how to how to control your unconscious mind. And like the ability, I read this book, okay, you get a CD in it as well. And okay, two seconds, I'm gonna get my charger. Yeah. So I read this book called Paul McKenna, Trains Your Unconscious Mind. It makes you achieve things that you can't, that you thought you could never achieve. It's a simple fact like one saying is that like when you see a, a toddler, it doesn't get up, try and walk, fall over, and then go, okay, that's it, that's enough for me. It keeps trying and trying until he achieves it. Think how hard it would have been from for crawling to walking on two legs standing up. That is that's harder than any job application, any job in around. Like so I see it as like um so I read this book, it changed me completely. I didn't I people use drink to be their selves. You should be yourself no matter what. You cannot care what, what people think about you. Because you could be a saint, okay, and people will still judge you, okay? That's humans for you. Everyone judges people. Everyone has opinions. So just do not care about those opinions. As long as you're doing good, okay? And be passionate about something, okay? And never, never beat yourself down. Because the only person you've got truly in this world is yourself. Okay? And I don't care if you grew up without a dad, without a mum, or if you've got no money, or if you've been whatever. Hard some life you've been through, you can do it. If not, if you've been through a harder life, you should be able to do it even more because you have that pain. When you convert that pain into energy, you can achieve the world. I just want you to be on the level that I'm thinking. I want to reach out to anyone that's watching this. That you can achieve anything, but you need a why. Okay, you need a why you want to achieve that. Then, when you get that why, okay, your body works overtime. You can work beyond what you thought you could work. And this life is like I've been listening to a guy called Eric Thomas. Okay, this guy is—he's like he's like a father. I haven't met the guy. He's like a father to me. What he says, what he's been through, is very similar to what I've been through. And he's buzzing every single day. And I'm thinking. Do you know what? I'm, he's like me. He's like a future me. He's like a future me. When I see him, okay, I think, wow, that's the time that I had. But I had it inside me. When I listened to Eric Thomas, it relit a spark. It relit my hunger to succeed. It diminished all the doubts in my head that I couldn't achieve. Things. Trust me, Eric Thomas, read him once a day. I promise you, he will change your life. And it's not that he will. He will make you change your life, I bet. He will give you the power, okay? You're not relying on him. It's down to you, okay? <laughs> He's just a, he can give you a head start. But I promise you, okay? No matter if you're white, you're black, you're gay, or whatever your background is, okay? Do not ever let someone ruin your dreams, okay? As soon as you believe 
or opinion, whatever someone said about you, okay, it turns into poison, okay, and then you believe that and then you can't succeed, okay. I promise you, if you can win, if you can win a race between billions of other different youths that were in your dad's nuts and you came in this world, okay, you won that race for a reason. You have a reason to be in this world as much as anyone else. Anyone who has any nut, you can be a millionaire. Like, everyone is equal, okay? Money just gives you fancy material things. But obviously money is good as well because it can give you time with your family. Everyone has to work. But if you have a lot of money, you can, you can give more and you have a lot of time with your family. And I think that's really special because your family are everything. And you should love children. I love children because children are pure. Children are like, they're not like um, adults where like, they can be nice to your face and then chat rubbish about you behind your back. They're nice people and I like it. And they're just, I coach soccer now. And now so what I, what I plan to do, I plan to make my own business. I start my own business. I'm sponsored by a protein program that sometimes sell like sports supplements. I want to be acting, modeling, I've been on a TV reality show, that was just for me to get my step in the door. And I just, the sky, okay, is the limit, is not the limit for me. I can go to the space, that's what space is for. So I promise you, whatever, whatever your goal is, come and do it. Today, today, not tomorrow, not next week, not next year, today. I challenge you. I challenge you if you can do it today. Do something today, smile at people. I smile at people. I count how many smiles I can do in one day. I count how many times I can open a door for somebody. And another good thing, I got another good technique, okay? Another good technique is like sometimes just get yourself into an uncomfortable position um position. So like if you're scared of speaking to like just random people, just do it. Just say something. It's a random, okay? This will get you in the mindset that you don't care what people think about you and you can be yourself. And I promise you, when you're yourself, that's the true freedom. No one can change you, okay? They can take, they can take, put you in prison, or they can take, or they can kill you. But trust me, you'll always have your soul, okay? Your soul lives on. Leave a legacy. Knowledge is to be gained and to be passed on. Okay? So, it's for me, to you and I hope you listen to all this video as well as long but I promise you it's worth it okay and just believe that you can do it because if I can do it you can do it okay I want to change the world I want to make the world a better place you should have the same mindset change the world make it a better place people that hate you people that don't really envy you they like you help them make them like you shine so they shine okay me to you okay enough love for me to you okay that's it that's it that's all about love and changing the world. Peace.